Hi everyone, welcome to Wool and Spinning. This is episode 181. My name is Rachel and I want to welcome you to this place. I am from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. And I just want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you to new viewers and returning viewers. Thank you for continuing to watch. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button if you wouldn't mind. And welcome to patrons of the show. Thank you so much for your continuing support. We are in the last stream of the year. It is the end of 2020, and uh, this will be the final stream for, for the year. So our next uh, live stream won't be until January 9th, so maybe that'll give you a chance to kind of catch up on episodes if you're falling behind a little bit, catch up with the community, catch up with your own making, and just sort of sit back and enjoy um, sort of a few weeks of quiet. So thank you so much to everybody who's in the chat today. For those who are new to this channel, basically the um, live streams are every Saturday morning and that is for patrons of the community and they are invited every week to come and join us and to chit chat along and it is always a lot of fun. I suspect that today will be quite a long show since it is the last one of the year and so thank you so much for being here. Um, Queries and Explorations meets after the live stream, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to start as close to 10 as possible, but we may be a little bit late today just getting up and running. I know it's so hard to believe, Diane. She just said, good morning, everyone. Last stream, hard to believe. It is hard to believe. I can't believe that we're kind of towards the end of 2020 now. It's really kind of kind of amazing. So let me check out my show notes here. I had a special request from Sarah, who's one of our um, very active community members. And um, she can't stay for the whole stream. Um, she's got some previous uh, something else. So she asked if I could please do the Breed and Color Study spoilers first. And so I said for her, I would do it. So I was going to save this for later in the show. But last night, Katrina of Crafty Jack's Boutique texted me. And she said, um, I have, and she texted me with a photo of Breed and Color Study, which is our next study that's starting up in January. So we do our breed and color studies over the space of six months. They run from January till the end of June, and then they start again in July till the end of December. So we're just finishing up Charrole, and our next study will start in January. So it usually takes us a month to kind of get up and running. Uh, usually we have uh, a couple of weeks of lead time. There's a wool and spinning radio episode, which is the audio podcast that patrons get when they subscribe to uh, the Patreon for the show, uh, patreon.com slash pearls. It's a monthly audio podcast. And every six months, Katrina and I sit down and we talk about the Breed and Color Study. And we sat down um uh, we and so we were we sat down a couple of weeks ago to record the current wool and spinning radio episode uh for december that was the uh tie up for char Rollet. and we were going to then wait a couple of days rest and then come back and record january but we weren't she wasn't quite ready because she was still playing with colors and then she texted me last night with the finished product and it is amazing so uh before I explain about all of the Braden and Color study that's up and coming for January, um, in today's show, I've got some spinning to share with you. I have a skein of finished yarn because last week the yarn was unfinished, so I'll show you the finished yarn this week. A new uh, e-spinner was sent to me to review, so we'll chat about that briefly. I shared it on the Advent vlog last night. So if you missed the Advent vlog, that was posted uh, quite late last night because I um, wanted to play with the e-spinner and uh, do that before I release the Advent vlog. And if you haven't been watching the Advent vlogs or you've missed them, uh, they are on the YouTube channel. They're public. They're available for everybody. They're about anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes long. And I have a sweater in progress to share with you. So uh, we've got a very full show because we also have some community participation that I wanted to share. So it's um, lots and lots to go through. So before I spoiler the Braden Color Study for January, let's uh, run the credits. Mm -hmm.
Okay, welcome everyone. Okay, so everybody's just getting up and running and getting themselves all sorted out. I'm glad everybody was able to find their way in. Um, oh, thanks, Martha. Yeah, I've been I've been knitting like knitting like the wind. <laughs> A couple of um, uh, podcast interviews for the new year for uh, Wool and Spinning Radio, uh, and it's amazing um, how quickly you can get <laughs> the body of a sweater knit when it's just vanilla in the round. So that was really fun. Um, okay, so let's talk about Breeding Color Study. So Breeding Color Study, um, for those who are new to the community, Breeding Color Study is an opportunity to look at a specific breed that's available out there on the market. And we've done anything from Finn to uh, Massim to Charolais to Polworth. We've done lots of different, or Targi, we've done a lot of different ones. And we do work with um, either combed top or uh, carded prep. So what we do is we alternate. So in January, we do comb top um, and we do a, a combed preparation and Katrina sources that. Um, and then in the uh, the second half of the year, we do a carded prep. Uh, and she we sort of look at, at color and fiber in a carded prep. And the reality is the majority of the fiber and the majority of the, the um, uh, wool that's available out there on the market, that's what people are spinning. Um, to do fleeces and to actually get people to source their own stuff and do that, some people for our, their studies have done that. But for the most part, most of us are, are working with prepared fibers. So um, basically what we have sort of ended up doing is um, uh, alternating so that we look at combed and carded. So coming up in January is our combed study. We just finished carded on our Char Rolet. And um, for this one, Katrina wanted to really, we, we talked about it a lot because we, we, we planned these almost a year in advance. And um, so we're already planning um, January of 2022 right now. And one of the things that we wanted to do with this study was to really push you guys in many different directions. And a couple of things that we talked about were, they kind of include, um, we wanted to look at natural shades. We wanted to look at a slightly bigger study like we did with the Massim and the Finn where we've got colors and combo spin options. We wanted to look at complements, uh, so that would be like you know yellow and or, um, uh, orange and blue, or purple and green, um, red. Uh, what are the complements? I don't have a color wheel in front of me. Anyways, we wanted to look at complements, and we also wanted to look at some black. So with all of that um, in the mix, uh, I bring you our study. So. There are three braids this time round. They will be available. I'm not sure how Katrina is going to do it. We've been talking about whether we're going to do half braids or full braid sets, but there are three colorways. And I am going to do, so I've got a whole bunch of stitch markers that I made this past week. And I have, I think I have quite a few. I've got about nine to give away throughout the show. So the first person to say what they think the breed is and is correct um, will win a stitch marker. So we'll do this throughout the show. So the first one is what breed are we studying? You guys can start throwing out ideas and I will show you the colors. So are you guys ready? I'm so excited to show. I kind of don't want to show you because then you'll know and they're just so amazing. <laughs> it's not BFL. These are the colors. So I'll show them to you one at a time, but they're, all three of these are on natural colors. Uh, Dorothy is correct. Oh, Sarah got it first. It was, it's Shetland. So Sarah, you won. Can you, uh, I have to make a note. I'm going to have to write this down. Otherwise I'm going to forget, uh, who won what. Um, I don't have any paper right here. Um, so I will, uh, I'll have to write it down. So this is the first color. This is on white Shetland. This is on plain white Shetland. And she's left the natural shades of the white in there. And then we've put black in there and we've got blue and orange to deal with this time round. So what you're going to do with that blue and orange and that purple and orange is going to be the challenge in terms of color. So this is the white one. And then this is the uh, oatmeal one. So this is the natural shades in there. So those are the natural colors that she's left here, here, and in the center there. And then again, you've got a very different, uh, the, the dye takes very, very differently. Oh, I'm glad you guys like them. So very, very different in how they take the color. So you can see how the white one is quite a bit brighter. 
Um, and then you've got the, the gray oatmeal kind of color and it's, you know, that, that little bit darker, a little bit more washed out. And then you've got the really dark, kind of a moret, a moret uh, color. So this in here is all the natural shade that's left. So in here, uh, in here and in here. And then you've got, you see how the black changes on the moret and the orange changes and the blue changes. So that's what you will have to deal with is how are you going to cope with those differences in those colors. So this is the gray and the moret next to each other. So you can see this one's quite a bit darker. And then I don't think my hands are free enough to hold up the third one, but there's the difference. Lots and lots to think about, lots to play with. So I'm not sure, um, um, Eve, I have, we, we'll talk about some of those details when we uh, do the radio show for January. So the radio show for January, the Woolen Spinning Radio Show, will um, have uh, all of the discussion with Katrina about all of this stuff. And um, that will be the second. So often on Woolen Spinning Radio, there's two episodes per month. And uh, often just because I've, I've got, you know, people that I'm chatting with and things that I want to share with you guys. So the, um, the Wool and Spinning Radio episode that will feature all of this will probably come out around January 15th-ish. And um, we'll be chatting about all of this stuff. Katrina will share with you her process and the colors and what she's thinking. And uh, we'll have links and, and everything will go live. Um, and we'll have dates for you at that point. So we're looking at the middle of January. She has a lot of dyeing to do. Uh, some of this study will be done dyed to order. So the, she will dye it after the order comes through. So we've got six months. We've got lots and lots of time. And uh, we don't have to do it all in the first two weeks of January, even though we want to. And and so, um, yeah, lots and lots to think about and lots and lots to play with. So we are studying Shetland this time around and we are doing some very, very cool things. Um, you could get some really incredible yardage with this. If you decided if we're, we're not sure if we're going to do full braids or half braids yet, just for, for supply um, stuff so that everybody gets a chance to participate. I think one of the really cool things about this study is that you've got three different shades, like literally three different shades. So if you had th half braids, so 50 grams of each fiber, you could get some crazy yardage if you combo spun all three together. And you did one single, one single, and one single, and then plied them all together. You'd have a lot of depth, a lot of um, interest in the yarn. And with 150 grams worth of spinning, three... 50 gram bobbins you would get crazy good yardage and then you could do that use that yarn for the color work in a sweater <laughs> oh. <laughs> it all comes together it's all full circle you guys so yes breed is shetland so we're looking at three different colors of shetland and the nice thing about shetland is because it does come in so many different colors and so many different um uh, natural shades um you could actually get like you could even do like one of the braids if there was one that really spoke to you and then you could do um or you could do a half braid set and then put some natural colored shetland with it and you could i mean oh like the sky is the limit your own imagination and the community's imagination is the limit we can just keep on going great question merit so uh, she's wondering how we sign up for the study. So basically what happens for those who are new to breeding color study and haven't done this before, uh, there will be a, so there's usually, uh, there's a lead up. So there's usually a blog post or, um, something that goes out in the newsletter. It kind of depends on how Katrina and I do it, but there's a lead up in terms of, um, something that's published that has all of the dates and the times and patrons of the community will get a discount uh, co um, a discount on the breeding color study. So what Katrina normally does is um, for the first hour that the listing on the shop goes live, um, that first hour is for patrons only. And um, she usually applies the discount during that first hour. And then after that, it goes public and anybody can participate. So uh, we invite everybody to participate in the studies. You do not have to buy fiber from Katrina by any stretch. I know for some shipping um, and uh, VAT fees and uh, um, exchange rates um, prohibit 
um, ordering from from different countries. So we're fully aware of that. You do not have to order from Katrina to participate. We're just we're studying Shetland and we're studying these colors. So um, you know, basically we're doing orange and blue, and we're looking at how black affects things and how natural shades affects things. So you can put together your own study if you want to. If you would like to participate with Katrina's fiber. Uh, those dates and times will go live in January and the links will go live for you guys to click on during that first hour of ordering. And it usually is pretty crazy and it usually is sort of a little bit overwhelming. So if it's your first time, just have patience and um, you cannot hold fiber early. You can't like we can't do any of that, but there will be stuff available afterwards for dye to order. Um, and Katrina's just kind of trying to figure it all out. Um, the last couple of studies, we have been very busy. Um, the comb, these comb top studies do tend to be more busy than the carded prep. I think it's kind of a time of year thing, but, um, yeah, it, it, it'll all kind of come clear in the next uh, month. There'll be some stuff that will be, um, published and you guys won't miss out. Don't worry. So reading colors. Yes, that's right, Greta. So you'll have to go back and watch the first, uh, the last 10 or 15 minutes because we were talking, we, we revealed the colors and we spoiled it all. So definitely go back, uh, Greta, and have a look. So thank you so much, you guys. I, I know um, I'm glad that you guys really love the colors and uh, I know Katrina's really excited about it and really excited to share and, and I'm, I'm glad to uh, be able to do that. So housekeeping is on the episode show notes for this um, episode. Um, our book club uh, is just finishing up with um, uh, Northanger Abbey. We're going to continue on with book clubs. So we're going to be doing, um, we're sort of looking at what books we want to do next. Our anti-racism book club meets monthly and they are coming up for another meeting at the beginning of January at some point. I think we're still figuring out dates. And um, we were exploring blends this month in uh, the How I Spin content. So the uh, vlog and the transcripts and everything for the Attentive Spinners and Hire is all available for you guys now. There is a newsletter. It is available at wealthforpearls.com. So please um, don't hesitate to hop on over there and just click subscribe. I only send it out once a month, mostly because that's as often as I can get it written. Uh, and it usually just includes all of the links and stuff for the content. So if you're looking for a way to sort of keep it organized, uh, that is a way. Oh, I always say Northanger Abbey, but I Mansfield Park, of course. And there will be two more meetings for Mansfield in January. You know what I think it is, you guys, why I can't keep it straight this time around? It's because I haven't started the book yet. So um, I've read the book before, but I wanted to reread it. And I think I just can't like keep it straight in my mind. So, so that is... Um, all of the housekeeping and that's sort of where we're at. So let's chat about some of my projects I've been working on this week. I'm going to flip the cameras around. I'm going to myself, I'm going to put myself back on. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, move myself over a tiny bit and we'll talk about my advent spinning. I am behind. So I got behind on my spinning this week. Again, I was all caught up. I was like doing so, 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 so well. And, um, and then I got behind. So um, this is all of the spinning to date. And we were talking in the lives in the, uh, uh, zoom meeting on, on Wednesday, on Thursday, we had another maker morning together. It was so much fun. Um, and Nora was homesick and she did so, so, so well. Um, you know, cause it's hard when mommy's working and, and when I've got stuff going on and she's home and, you know, she was hungry and she kept coming in asking me for food, but like she did really, really well. And we had such a great visit, all of us and checked in and because some people, it was their second maker morning. Um, you know, we kind of knew who each other were and, uh, you know, what we were, what we were, um, um, you know, sort of who we were and who everybody was and so on and so forth. So that was really cool. Um, and, yeah, so we were talking about it on the the breeding colors or sorry the advent spinning calendar. This is from Kingdom Fleece and Fiber Works. We were talking about it on on Thursday morning because the thing is is that this yarn and this fiber it's Columbia Dorset and it is so bouncy and springy. And so I, I am very very tempted to weave with it and to put it into a blanket and to sort of put it into the order um, so that it would be kind of like this for the order. I've been kind of thinking about this in my head. Uh, the thing is, is that it's because of the way that it's finishing, it, it would be kind of, I'm not sure that it would be great 
finished uh in a blanket like I'm not sure you know like it's so bouncy and it's so springy and lovely um I, I I don't know if it would uh do it justice by putting it into a blanket um so I don't know I I'm really I'm really torn I have to admit I'm I'm really I'm really torn about whether or not it's the right thing to do um to put it into a uh, blanket or not and whether or not to weave it um I think time will tell like I'll, I'll figure it out over the next couple of weeks and maybe do some sampling but I mean a gradient like this of the rainbow like that would be that would be really cool because there's red still too to do so these are the reds that would go in here let me just push this over a little bit so it's still in the camera but like how beautiful would that be right and then you've got that one over here and then day number 18 um, would probably fit in somewhere over here so and this is the color that's on my wheel right now so this would go in somewhere over here this color in here and bridge that so you know I mean that would be really fun um, there's this one that I haven't applied yet it's sort of being held in a plying ball so that would go in here somewhere um yeah so I guess I'm kind of just thinking out loud like I you know I there's there's so many options it's almost a little bit overwhelming um to try to figure out like what to do with these um and I was thinking about a blanket where you'd have four picks of each color all the way across um and then you do four four um uh four ends so you'd have like and that would just keep repeating all the way up kind of like what I did with those tea towels and um but I'm not sure that there's enough yardage to do that so um you'd probably need something else in the weft um well the warp and the weft to kind of round it out yardage wise so um depending on how long you wanted it to be so if it was like a three or four yard warp for a blanket and then you'd have to kind of work out the work out the yardage so I don't know because people were talking about doing a sweater and doing like striping in the sweater and then you could do like uh you could do a vest or you could do plain arms or you know there's lots of lots of things that you could do so I'm kind of thinking out loud but that's sort of what I I'm kind of stuck kind of a little bit stuck trying to figure out what I want to do because I don't want these yarns to just language languish I don't want them to just like sit and not be used I think it'd be really fun to actually use them so I'm keeping them in my basket it's one of my it's from Ikea it's just a plain they have them in all different colors and I've just been keeping them in here just to mostly to keep them organized um so that I don't lose them because that is a real thing so yeah oh <laughs> bless you um Marsh that's so funny so it does make a really pretty gradient thank you Sarah I'm kind of ignoring you guys in chat I don't mean to there's just so many things to uh to chat about if you caught actually I'll just spend a minute um does Rachel ever sleep oh Samantha you're so funny actually so I have to tell you this um we've got lots of time this morning so well we do because queries and explorations we'll have to uh start a minute late but the um Mike said to me this morning he's like we have to start going to bed early so and I said to him I'm like I'm the one that always goes to bed super early and he's like yeah but you're starting to stay up super late he's like I don't know what that's about but you, you're 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 messing with my recovery and I was like okay so it, no more going to bed at 10 p.m and he's like yeah it's just way too late I'm like 10 p.m is not that late but I used to go to bed at like 8 p.m. but then I would get up really super early so since the COVID and the gym being closed and everything I don't get up super early and um, I've been sort of sleeping in which for me is like I would be like my perfect day if I could like have my own circadian rhythm and have my own like working schedule which I kind of do but you know you guys know what I mean like if you weren't dictated to by by outside forces if it was just me and I could be completely selfish and do only what I want to do my like a perfect day would be like 6 30 7 a.m to like 8 or 8 30 p.m and work from like 7 7 15 like work start work right away and be done by like 1 p.m 2 or 2 p.m like that would be like my ideal work I am the best 
um, from about 7.30 till about 1 p.m. That's like my window of like ideal time. And like some people, there are night owls, right? So then their ideal time would be like 10 p.m. or, or 2 p.m. or 4 p.m. to start work, right? But for me, like that five hour window from about 7, 7.30 till about 1, 1.30, that is my like I can I I can do a lot but then I go but then like the rest of the day is quite quiet um and I think a lot of that is just my circadian rhythm like I tend to start slowing down around 4 or 5 p.m I'm kind of not done but I'm sort of like I need quiet I don't want really loud music I don't tend to want to watch movies um and then I kind of get a little bit of a second wind around 7 p.m for an hour or two so yeah it's funny how we're all very different So can you, do you guys know what this is? I've got a couple of guesses already. Somebody said it's a Degolus. Um, what else do you guys think it is? Somebody who, anybody who watched um, the um, Advent vlog yesterday will know what it is. Um, and so I started playing with it last night. Uh, Kim sent this to me to play with. And uh, me and the kids, biology, well done, Sarah. So another Sarah one. I need to get a piece of paper. Um, if I don't write this down, you guys, I'm not, I'm not going to remember. Do you guys ever have scratch pads? Do you guys ever make scratch pads with old paper? Um, my mom used to make them when I was growing up. So, uh, I, um, yeah, Sarah, Sarah won the first one and then the other Sarah won the other one. So that's great. So there's another set of stitch markers to go out. Super fun. So it's Plyology. Um, this is their e-spinner prototype. So they are running a Kickstarter. They're getting it up and running. Kim sent this to me. She reached out to me a few days ago and asked me if I'd be interested in um, reviewing it for them. So it came last night from UPS. It was really super fast. Um, they are running a Kickstarter. Um, they have asked for reviews and whatnot. Um, and, and they just sort of in the... In the spirit of transparency, because I think sometimes when stuff is given for review, it's sort of assumed that it's given for free. Um, and I think sometimes that can sort of make people feel like it's maybe not, uh, you're not getting 100% um, honest reviews sometimes because, um, you know, somebody's gotten something for free, they're going to say that it's the best. Anyways, Kim, um, because they're just getting up and running and they've got a Kickstarter going and everything, basically what they've asked for with their reviewers is that people review it um, and send it back or to purchase it and to participate in the Kickstarter and that if you were a reviewer that you may, that you get a little bit of a discount. So I think that's really fair. I think it's a great way of broaching, of bridging that, that gap. Um, and it also frees me up to be able to give a really super honest review because I think it's important to do that. Um, so this is really neat. I'm not sure how much fiber fits on these things. Um, that's something that I'm going to have to figure out. Uh, I really, really like thus far that the bobbin is, um, you, it fits into these, um, gears at the front and the back to, to, um, lock it in. So, and it's spring loaded. So you can see that it just, um, kind of locks in like that. It, it, so that's really neat. I am spinning my advent calendar on disc staves, disc staves. So I had this already loaded and um, ready to go. So I just sort of started spinning it on, on this. I found it really difficult at first to be even in my spinning because I was sort of getting used to the wheel and playing around with it. It's very intuitive. I got it right away. Um, and uh, I'll be chatting more about it um, in the wool circle on Friday because by then I'll have been playing with it for about a week. And so that'll give me an opportunity to um, play with it a little bit more over the course of this week and get get sort of a feel for it. And I would I would like to like I'm spinning the advent calendar long draw. I would like to spin some um, fiber on it in my default way of spinning because then I can get a really good idea of what the what the wheel really feels like. And that's a really nice way to be able to do that. So. Um, that is sort of, um, going to be up and coming on the wool circle this coming Friday that, that, or sorry, this coming Thursday, cause it, we're, we moved it by one day cause Friday is Christmas day. Um, and the wool circle was supposed to meet yesterday, but I said to them, um, in the Slack channel, um, if you're part of the wool circle or higher tier and you're not in the wool circle, um, channel on Slack, um, make sure that you find it and ask for an invite because, um, I post, we post things in there that we talk about on the wool circle on it's, uh, twice a month on Fridays. 
Anyways, I asked them if they wanted to move it by one week so that I would have an opportunity to play with this and maybe have some other things to share. So we decided to do that. So it'll be on Thursday on Christmas Eve, which is really fun. So that is the plyology wheel that I am playing with. And then the last thing that I wanted to share with you is this fiber. I had shared this with you last week. And this is that UK Shetland that I was spinning that was from Small Bird Workshop from uh, Catherine. And I wasn't finished when I had pulled it off the wheel and I had left it with um, kind of a lower twist angle. It wasn't really super tightly twisted. I will zoom the camera in a little bit for you guys here so that you can really see it. Um, and it really, in the washing, um, because of the lower twist angle, it really puffed up and filled in those spaces. It was spun long draw. As you can see, it's not super consistent. There's some thin spots, some thicker spots, and a lot of that is because the prep itself was so uneven. So this is one of those situations where there's a couple of things that you can do when you have a prep that's not um, super, super even. So this prep had a lot of um, short bits in it. It had tips that weren't opened up properly. Um, there were bits that were um, that had a lot of VM in it. It was incredibly soft, and the finished yarn is so soft. But there was a lot of naps and a lot of areas where there was some like chunks of of fiber. It was almost like a little cloud of fiber within the prep within the pin drafting. So it made the spinning really interesting because you can't just like spin evenly. You you sort of have to um, stop and start a little bit. I was spinning long draw. I'll show you some, some video. And um, off the distaff there, I wasn't really able to, you can see as I'm drafting there, you see all those, those chunks and then you have to go back and double draft. So you go back, draft it apart again, and then continue on. So a little bit of a challenge in terms of keeping it consistent and keeping it even, because as you can see, just from even me spinning, um, I there's no rhythm. You know, I'm kind of stopping and starting, going back, double drafting a lot. And I knew that this yarn wouldn't come out really, really super evenly. I knew that it would come out a little bit um, uneven, some thicker spots, some thinner spots, some areas where um, you've got some big, um, not, they're, they're naps, but they're sort of like areas where the fiber almost looks like it's like not drafted. I don't know if you guys can see that there. The, the camera's a bit bright, but um, you, you've got these areas in the fiber where it's like literally not, not drafted. Um, and then you've got other areas where the yarn came out just absolutely perfectly and just absolutely beautifully. And you've got this gorgeous twist angle of about 35 degrees and it's really super even. Um, but, you know, with prep like this, you can either give up and just feel really super frustrated by it um, you can kind of muscle through it and force yourself to continue spinning. Or you can sort of take it as an opportunity to learn and figure out um, what the best way is to spin it to get a yarn that's usable, that's structurally sound, that you like, that you, that you would enjoy knitting with, um, that's soft and softly spun so that it's not, it doesn't come out hard or coarse, and that is aesthetically pleasing in terms of like, you know, a nice twist angle. It's relatively even, um, but it's not perfect. And the cool thing, I was really hoping I could get a knitted swatch done before the show today, but I will definitely have one for you in January. The cool thing about this is that it's going to make a really great yarn, you know, and it'll make a really great background yarn for a shawl or a toque or a cowl. Um, where you've got, um, you know, another, maybe another yarn, um, like this one, for example, where you're working maybe some mosaic stitches or some color work stitches. Um, and this can be a background yarn because it will, in the washing process, it's 100% Shetland. Those, um, if you put it into warm or hotter water without agitating it, those scales and everything will open up and it'll lock in with the other fiber as long as it's not super washed. And you'll have this really sound, structurally really sound fabric with gorgeous color work. You just need a high contrast yarn so that it'll come up against the gray. So I have to say that um, in some ways I really like these yarns because they push my comfort zone in terms of how to spin them. 
and you sort of have to work through it and figure it out. And if you give it, if you give up, um, you don't learn what works and what doesn't work for some of these preps. I have another pin drafted roving in my stash that is from a local shop and it's just chalk or block full of naps and it the tips caught on the carding machine. My friend Kim McKenna looked at it with me and we were spinning it different ways to see sort of what it would look like and how it would come out. And you know, we made some amazing yarn by softly spinning it, gently spinning it, not trying to pull out every single nap, just letting them go by. And the two ply that was um, as a result um, of playing with this prep, and I, I still have the rest of it in my stash to, to be spun because I have like a pound of it, um, came out with this just absolutely beautiful two-ply that's light and lofty, and it has quite a bit of texture. So if you were to dye it, it would, um, you know, it would look like a tweed yarn, um, even though the naps would come out with the same dye shade and the dye color as the rest of the yarn because it's the same fiber. Um, you would have this lovely texture throughout the, throughout the fiber. So, oh, great question, Zan. What do you think of the tension control? So I haven't played with it enough to get a chance to um, play with that enough, Zan, to be able to answer. I'm sure by the end of the week I'll be able to. At this point, spinning what I've spun, because it's just been a very, it's, I've spun about, um, so each of the bundles from my spinning advent calendars is half an ounce, and I've spun about half of that ounce on it. So far, the uptake, um, the break is at zero. So I have no tension on it right now, and it's pulling up. It's an Irish tension wheel, if my memory serves correctly. I don't want to give... Um, I don't want to give um, misinformation because um, you can find them at plyology.com. And um, let me just double check the tension. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's a uh, um, new intuitive design. You don't have to maintain a brake band or a drive band. Both the motor, the drive motor and the brake motor are in, are in line and coupled together, hidden away so you can focus on your spinning. So it's a direct tension motor and then a direct drive flyer motor. So it's very cool. Like at the front here, um, you have it all, it's all set up for you there in the front. So that's actually, oh, sorry, in the back right here. So you've got your two motors back here. Um, so, so far, I'll talk about it more on Friday, but um, so far my break is at zero. Um, I haven't had to put up anything. So this is the link. Um, it's plyology.com. And then let me catch up because you guys are also, you have, um, you've got a couple of questions that I want to answer. So let me just go back and make sure that I, um, don't miss you. Oh, that's awesome, Meg. You're on the bike trainer while you're watching today. I'm, I'm glad you're getting moving. Um, okay. Sometimes when I have a little cloud in the spun yarn, I just grab it and pull it out. So Elizabeth, yes. Um, often it is short bits that will come out and the single looks fine. Um, yeah, so this is one of those situations where there were so many, it's not, it wasn't worth it. Same with the, um, pin drafter roving that I was telling you about that, um, my friend Kim and I were playing with. Part of the problem is that you get to the point where there comes a point where you, you just can't sit there and every inch of your yarn pulls stuff out. So when it's that, uh, copious, um, it, uh, it's just, it's just too much. Um, and you need to be able to sort of just keep spinning. Um, like even if you look at this here in this section, like there's a bit there, there's a bit there, there's a bit there, there's a bit there. Like that's all within like one inch of yarn. Um, I'm not sure if you can really see that cause of the gray, but like it's, there's no way, but normally if there's a, if there's a bit like that, or there's a second bit, I would just pull it out. But, uh, yeah. Are the naps usual? No. So this pin drafted, I'm not sure what happened with this fiber. Um, it was a combination of a whole bunch of different Shetland fleeces. Like there was some black in there, some gray, some white. Um, I think they probably took a whole bunch of fleeces and just carded them all together. And some of them were probably a little bit better quality than others. 
Um, and you know, it all has to do with sort of, you know, the, the original prep and how it was, how it was, um, prepped and washed originally. So it would be interesting to talk to Catherine about that process of, of, cause the thing is that this fiber, the fiber itself is really soft. Like it is next to the skin soft. It is so soft. So it is definitely worthwhile, um, to prep and play with and to have the patience to spin it because, uh, the, the finished yarn is lovely. So. Oh, Mars. So you've got some tunis right now that's plucked the nips as you go. That's really hard. Um, oh, Sarah, you're so funny. Um, oh, Mars. Yes, my feet treadle very, very slowly. I think that's one of the things about the e-spinners that I actually find a little bit difficult is because I treadle really super slowly, but I'm used to really high ratios. So like the, the plyology wheel, when I was playing with it last night, um, the, this is the speed. So this is down, down here at the bottom is zero. And I had it up at like three o'clock. <laughs> I was like having to crank the thing up because of course my, my hands move so quickly, even though I, I treadle so slowly. So it was kind of figuring all of that out. Um, how do you know when it's fine to keep in the yarn and it will work itself out versus when it's junk? Great question, Jenny. So she's asking about when you know to leave some of the stuff in the yarn versus when to pull it out. You guys aren't going to like my answer, but the only way to figure it out is by sampling. When you know that there is so much in there, that there's no way that spinning in a relatively timely manner um would like if you're sitting there and you're pulling it out pulling it out pulling it out and you've only done a couple of inches of yarn or you're thinking about taking all of the fiber and re-prepping it that's one of those situations where you have to decide is it um worth it to pull it all out or is it worth it to just spin it and, and come what may um yeah, you, you have to um, decide what your time is worth for one and whether or not you want to re-prep fiber. In some ways, I kind of wish I had thrown the Shetland back through my drum carter. Um, that wouldn't have taken very long and I could have pulled off some smooth bats. Um, on the other hand, I really like the yarn that was that resulted from it. With the Coriadale that I mentioned that has all those neps in it where the tips would have caught, um, I had combed some of it to do a sample. It came out absolutely beautifully, but the problem is there's so much waste. So you have to sort of weigh it all out and decide and, and do some samples, spin with it in there, spin with it not in there, try some different drafts, try some different ways, try the pluck as you go, um, and just see, see where you end up. So let me just catch up with, with chat. You guys have some great questions today. Um... The Nano, you guys are talking about the Nano. Sometimes I love it and sometimes not so much. Shauna says, I have a Nano as well. I, Mike and I were talking about it last night because it's funny, like my, my Ashford E-Spinner 3, if I'm gonna use a spinner, I will go to that wheel. Um, and a lot of it is because the battery pack, which I'm gonna try with the um, Plyology wheel as well. But one of the things that I really find with um, the, the my spinners is they're great for when I'm standing in the kitchen. So let me show you some, footage of last night one of the reasons why I really wanted to get a spinner way back when I first got my Hanson years ago like this was like 2011 I think and maybe 2010 Hanson was still relatively new at the time um this was why or I should go this way this was why I wanted a spinner because I was waiting for the kettle to boil and I had rice going on the stove. Actually, I didn't. I had quinoa. And um, I was waiting for stuff to heat up. And I was just standing there at the counter spinning. And this was my original reason for wanting a spinner. But over the years, I have found that what I really end up doing is using my spinners when we go camping. And my Nano, I was saying to Mike last night, like my Nano is in a box upstairs and I never use it. Um... And I think a lot of that is because I just don't, I just don't, I don't use it, um, you know, because it, it, um, it's very small. It shifts around. Um, I've been meaning to get Mike to build me a um, little platform to hook it onto. I, we haven't gotten there. One of the things about the plyology wheel is they put um, these little um, bumpers on the bottom to kind of hold it in place. So I thought that was brilliant because it doesn't move at all. Um, as you can see, it's absolutely sound on the counter. It hasn't moved the whole time. I think somebody made a comment about the color, that they love the color. It is really pretty with the black. So, 
Uh, is the spinner like a built-in double drive? I don't know if you would classify it as double drive because um, they're kind of built in together at the back of the wheel. It, they're calling it direct flyer. So um, I wonder if that's more like an Irish tension and I don't want to give any misinformation because I'm not super familiar with it yet. Like it literally showed up yesterday at 3 p.m. So um, I've only been able to play with it for a couple of minutes. The other spin that I've been working on is my Karma. So I pulled it back out and I've been spinning on my Karma. This is my West Coast color. I feel like we're kind of all over the place today, but everything is related in some way, shape or form. So this is another situation where um, you're spinning away and the wheel, um, I had originally started to sample this on my Mashcraft Suzy Pro and I was finding that it was too fast, right? And a lot, and the reason for that is because if you can see, look at how close my hands are with this. Like they're, they're, they're so close, just, you know, draft back, draft back, drafting only about an inch of fiber at a time. And we've talked on the show before, this is a 50-50 Merino yak blend. And that yak is so short and it's like spinning from a cloud, right? Just like cashmere. And the, um, if you hold it too tight, all that yak gets pulled out as you're spinning. And if you spin too fast, all of that yak will collect in your palm as well because you're drafting so quickly that it ends up only the merino is drafting. And so with this, I had to slow myself down a little bit and hop on my Saxony, put it on a bigger ratio so that it was spinning more slowly. And my feet were treadling obviously at their default slow pace and I was able to just do those short drafts and this has ended up being quite a slow spin. So I have um, four more bobbins of 50 grams to spin. I'm almost at the end of this 50 grams and then um, I have three more to do and then I'll apply them together because this was that combo spin. So um, yeah, all good. A uh, whole new, you guys, oh, this is how Rachel gets so much done multitasking. Actually, Kathy, you, um, you're you so funny because um, Mike and I were talking a couple of days ago about multitasking because he is a terrible multitasker. So like one morning we had, I was in the kitchen doing the kids lunch. I hadn't had breakfast yet. I was making coffee um, and we had some tea going and there's like all the stuff going on. The backpacks needed to be packed. I had come off of a day shift. So I was a bit, I was quite tired and Mike was just standing there. Like, he's just standing there. I'm like, could you, like, could you do something? And he's like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm not sure what I should, what I should be doing. I'm like, okay. <laughs> There's all this stuff to do. I'm a very good uh, multitasker. I'm very efficient. I think that's from Emerge. It's from like 10 years of Emerge. I think I'm just, and, and then working in ICU, um, you get really efficient at doing things and the stuff that you don't necessarily want to be like wasting your time on, you get very quick at getting it done very quickly and doing it well. That's, that's part of the, um, the trick is doing these things well. Yeah, I wonder if having the, the spinner in the bathroom would be a good idea or not. I was thinking that too, Rebecca, because of all the steam. You'd have to take it out when you're having a bath or a shower. Yeah. Uh, exactly the problem with fibers with such different lengths, not your fave. Yeah, so I think that's one of those things where you have to um, really decide at the beginning when you're going to spin some of these blends that have multi multiple different... Um, uh, lengths. Um, you have to decide, A, are you willing to put up with it? B, um, you have to do some sampling and C, you're, you have to be really intentional about how you're spinning it. So if you start to go on autopilot and start to sort of shut off, uh, it's probably a good idea to um, uh, decide whether or not that's something you want to spend your time on. And I think it's okay to say that some stuff is not necessarily what you want to spin. Like, that's okay. I don't love spinning certain fibers, and so I don't. <laughs> mm. So true, Zen. You, I keep moving on to new topics, and you guys keep going back to the spinner. <laughs> That's okay. It's a, it's a, our last show, so that is okay. Multitasking, riding the trainer, watching woolen spinning, and knitting at the same time. I love it, Meg. You're like a, a girl of my own heart. 
Um, I was actually wondering, Debbie just made an interesting comment. So she knits and spins during meetings uh, since she works remotely now. Um, how many of you during COVID have been able to do that? So with working from home and having so many meetings on Zoom and being at home, um, I know there was a couple of people in our Maker Morning on Thursday that were actually um, multitasking. They were working, but they were also able to be part of the meeting for a few minutes. Um, I wonder um, how you guys find that. Because I know when I was working from home, I took a year off of critical care because I was really burned out and I was trying to decide if I wanted to finish my nurse practitioner or not. So I was halfway through my master's degree in to become a, a nurse practitioner and I really wasn't enjoying it. And so I was um, trying to figure out if I wanted to stay or not. And so I went into primary, pra primary care for a year and um, we would work remotely one or two days a week. And it was a 14 day fortnight, or sorry, a 15 day fortnight. So, a nine day fortnight, sorry. So we would work uh, 10 hour days for um, nine of the 10 work days. So Monday to Friday, Monday to Thursday, Monday to Friday, Monday to Thursday. And so I always had my Fridays off, but often there were meetings on Fridays. So I would, I would remote, I would remote in and um, I would always knit, but I never found that I was able to spin. Um, yeah. So I, I wonder what you guys do. I knit at meetings. San says, uh, when I'm in really stressful meetings, I find I knit really fast. They call it anger knitting. I love that, Debbie. I bet your tension changes though, hey? I bet you have to be careful about that. So I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, since we keep coming back to the spinners, what is your favorite spinner? Even if you don't own one, what is your favorite one? Like if you were to go and buy one, if you had $2,000 to go and spend right this second, what spinner would you buy? Um, if you could go and buy anything. I've just noticed that yet again, that tunic appears to be buttonless. No, no, it has buttons. They're just down below. I put black buttons on. Remember the other ones were too heavy. They're just down lower because it's like, it's such a deep V-neck. So they, it's just the way I'm sitting. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to show you Jingle while you guys talk to me about um, your uh, experiences of, um, your experiences about e spinners. If you had, if you had an inordinate amount of money and you could spend anything, what would you, what would you buy for an e spinner? I would love to know. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get this to work. The camera is um not loving me right now. Oh, that'll probably work. There we go. Okay, so let me just switch the cameras around. A Degolus. Leanne would get a Degolus. Why? I would love to know why. I'm writing this down. Leanne answered first. Oh, Zan answered E Spinner. Linnea said an Ashford E Spinner 3 or a Hansen. Diane says a Hansen or an Ashford. Um, I have an Ashford E spinner and a Degolith. I would buy a bigger Degolith. Uh, Martha says that she sees a lot of amazing work from the Degolith spinners. Um, <laughs> Meg says whichever one has a woolly winder. Um, what else do you guys say? Degolith, a Roberta. Good, good one, uh, Katie. Um, <clears throat> So even if you haven't tried them, Zan, what would, what would you say, like, what would your, um, what would be your, like, um, like, what would your instinct be? Um, oh, beautiful. The Rambouillet, uh, Diana just finished spinning the long way homestead Rambouillet. That is actually on my list for the next couple of weeks. I'm dying to spin that. Um, Pia says that she would get a, a Degolus because her nano e-wheel is too light. That's what I find. They're too light. They move around a bit too much. Um, a spoon, uh, Zan says maybe a Spinolution or a Hanson. This is awesome, you guys. Um, or a Han So yeah, Zan says Han they're so pretty. The Hansons are pretty. Um, Marit says that a nan she has a nano and she likes it, but she doesn't love it. She would prefer a treadle wheel. Lots of people have said that they probably wouldn't get an e-wheel, that they would probably get a, a treadle wheel. So, okay, so the first person who answered me was Diane. So Diane, I'll send you out some stitch markers. Anybody who's won, if you guys could please um, send me your mailing addresses, I would really appreciate that. 
<clears throat> all right, let me go all the way back down. With $2,000, I buy a whole whack of specialties, specialty supported spindles. Totally, Diana. I knew you would do that. Yeah. Um, oh, awesome, Jenny. So she's, Jenny joined the uh, um, Long Way Homestead uh, Club too. That's wonderful. Elizabeth would get a Lundrum Saxony. Um, I feel like Hanson and Ashford seem so popular around Ontario. You know what, Jenny? They're popular everywhere. I think Hanson and Ashford's are kind of like this, they're like the, um, the backbone of the, of the spinners, I think. Um, you know, I, th I think they're popular everywhere. Um, and on the West coast, of course, um, Hanson's right here. They're right over the border from me. So a lot of people here have Hanson's if they have e-spinners and a lot of people have Ashford e-spinners. So let's talk about my jingle really, um, for a minute. I have made excellent progress. I cast off the body last night. So I did lengthen the body. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is in the pattern. It's not super short. Like a lot of sweaters right now are either cropped or they're, they want you to cast off around like 13, 13 and a half inches. And um, Isabel's was longer. I think it was 15 inches. Anyways, I made mine 15 and a half because I just need that little bit of extra length in the body. It's knit flat, or sorry, knit straight. So there's no side shaping. There's no fiddling around. Um, you just knit, 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 knit. And then I was able to start the sleeves. So this is the first sleeve over here. And um, I I like my sleeves to be a little bit longer. So they'll be about, it'll be about 19 inches long. This is my second skein of yarn. I obviously have a third skein, which I will need for the, for the second sleeve. And um, this is the Colorwork Yoke. Didn't that, it, I, I'm just shocked at how well it came out. I'm so happy with it. I'm really excited to get it washed and blocked because a little bit of the inconsistencies in here that just from the yarn, like just not laying completely flat, um, will lay um, just beautifully after washing. So this is my organic Polworth from Kinfolk. This was the yarn here. And I used such a small amount of it. It was just a tiny, tiny bit. I don't think the camera likes this. Um, <clears throat> it was just a tiny amount. So I've got so much left over, which is fantastic because I'll really be able to use it. So I'm gonna put it back in its skein form. Um, so that it doesn't sit in a wound ball for too long. And um, what color work sweater do you guys want to make? What's a pattern that you are really excited to do? I would love to hear. Is there one that comes to mind just off the top of your head that you're excited to make? Um, I This is my second yoked sweater this year. So my other one that I did was the Pink Velvet by Andrea Mowry. And I really enjoyed doing that one. There were sections in that one that were a little bit longer where you had to carry your floats a little bit. And um, with this one, the longest that you carry your floats over in terms of like the number of stitches is four. So there was nowhere where I had to catch my floats at all. Even down here where you've only got the one stitch, you're only carrying it across about three stitches. So that was really nice. I found that actually picked me up. Uh, it made it a lot faster because I didn't have to slow down um, at all. I could just keep knitting um, and I didn't have to worry about weave, um, weaving in my floats. So, oh, oh, goodbye, Becca. I'm sure she's already gone, but Merry Christmas. Um, Dana says she would knit the Birkin. Um, somebody else says the Jingle. Samantha said Jingle. Um, jingle, Pink Velvet. Um, Debbie says, I just want to make a sweater. I'm unreasonably terrified by it. We'll jump into the Slack channel because they, they will help you. Um, let's see, Jingle Junction. Oh, um, Arboreal, Ar Arboreal. Mary wants to knit that one. Uh, Early Bloomer, Garden Gate, Puffin. Um, that's awesome. You guys have lots of patterns that I need to look up now. I've, I know of all of these ones, but... Um, I, I need to look it up. So uh, Dana, I'll be saying you some stitch markers as well. Again, if you can send me your mailing address. So let me just move this back a little bit. Actually, I might not need to. So let's do some community participation. Not that we haven't been doing a lot of community participation already today, but it's fun to keep, keep it going. Um, you... Um, for December, if you guys could tell us about your holiday plans and you can enter that into the, um, comments here on YouTube, not the live stream, but in the comments themselves, 
or um, you can go to the episode thread on Ravelry, which is here, um, the December episode thread, and tell us what your holiday plans are. And a lot of it, the reason why I use this prompt this time around is because this year is not going to look the same for many of us. And um, we won't be gathering in big family groups and whatnot. And so we maybe be choosing one other household or like for us, for example, my mom is in our household because she's by herself. So um, yeah, if you could tell us in the comments, not the live chat, but in the comments or um, in the episode thread on Ravelry so that we can draw a winner on January 9th for the December giveaway. And Ashley, for December, Liz sent me, I had ordered from her. So for my natural shades along, our natural shades along is, is celebrating natural colored wool. And I have been collecting all of my colors. So I, she had had um, some fin and silk um, bull, from Bullseye in her, um, that she had done up. It's just this gorgeous um, sort of ready Murat color. She has tons of it. It is so soft and lovely. I'm just, oh my goodness. So she sent me two of these. One to give to you guys and one for me that I have bought um, to spin. So I think that will be our giveaway for, for December. It's it's a good sized one and, and I'm definitely, um, I'm, I'm really happy to send that out to you guys. So I think it's 100 grams. It's four ounces. And um, yeah, if you guys could tell us for December what your holiday plans are, comment in the Ravelry group um, in the December episode thread or comment here on YouTube for those who don't use um, Ravelry for lots of different reasons. Okay, so that's my natural shades long. And actually, I'm hoping that in January's show, I'll have my natural shades collected and I'll be able to share with you what I am going to do for my natural shades because I need five colors for the sweater that I have chosen. And I think I have uh, settled on what I'm going to spin. So now I need to do some sampling and figure out because the pattern that I want to do is, um, what's it called? Gray, gray Roop, I think it's called. I don't really know how to say it. It's by Camilla Vlad and I need five colors and it is a uh, DK, heavy sport light DK for the spinning. So we'll, I'll do some, um, some sampling. So we haven't asked anything for our community participation, which we haven't done for a while, but I would love to hear from you guys. This is from Mimi in the Ask Anything thread on Ravelry. And she says, I'm about to do my first larger combo spin and was looking for advice on these braids. I'm shooting for a mostly tonal yarn with which that will either be a two or a three ply, depending on how thick I end up spinning. Appreciate any feedback. So as you guys are throwing out ideas in terms of um, advice and how you would spin these six braids, there's a couple of things that we have to take into account with this. So number one, she hasn't told us if she wants to spin for a sweater or a garment. She hasn't told us if she what weight she needs to spin at because the finer she'll spin that she spins, if she were to do a fingering, a light fingering, a heavy fingering, or if she would do an Aran or a worsted weight yarn, those two extremes are gonna cause differences in this finished yarn. It's gonna look different. If you go to a thicker yarn with all of these different braids, you're gonna have more of a uh, sort of a, a speckled look. You're gonna have the colors, they're not gonna spin over such a long length of fiber. They're gonna be shorter because you're spinning thicker. Um, and so you're gonna have sort of more of a, uh, color twisted, those colors are going to come out more um, clearly. But if you spin a much finer yarn, those colors are going to spread out over a longer period of, over a longer space, uh, over a longer length of yarn. And you're going to end up with a darker yarn, regardless of whether the white or cream in there, you just, the, the, the lighter weight, the more, the, the, the darker the yarn, especially if you go with a two ply, not so much with a three ply. So as you guys are looking at these colors, what we need to think about is what would you do? If you had these six braids, what would you spin for? Like what garment would you spin for? Uh, what weight of yarn would you be going for and why? Uh, and would you do a two ply or a three ply and go? <laughs> so I know what I would do. Um, and I don't really want to say until I read what you guys um, have to say, um, because uh, I want to I hear what you guys um, have to say. So while you're going to, while you guys are um, um, writing out your answers, um, I'm just going to check chat because you guys were chatting about some stuff. I just finished the Hansel Half Cap, used hand spun Gotland. Oh, that sounds amazing, Bridget. 
and then various leftover hand spuns from a variety of breeds. That sounds really fun. Beautiful, um, Bridget. Chrysler Cardigan I've spun for. Excited about that. Um, that was from Rebecca. How are you, Rebecca? I hope you're doing really well. I would, okay, so here are some answers. All right, so Elizabeth loves that braid A. That is really beautiful. Um, okay, so Holly would combo spin a two ply. Okay, but if you're gonna combo spin, like what would your combo spin be? Like what would you do, Holly? Um, like would you strip it down? Would you jumble it all up? Like what would you do? Um, San says she would do a sport weight three ply with from random nests of fiber. Oh, because that's the other thing. Mimi didn't say what this fiber is. So she didn't say if it's all the same breed or if it's a mix of different breeds. So you have to take that into account too. Uh, Eve says she would strip plenty and spin a three ply for an overall homogenous yarn. Um, Shauna says that she just got done watching the tutorial by the Passio Knit Spinner where she mixes the braids and I love how that comes out. I'd separate the fiber like she does and do a two ply fingering or sport. So that is a video. Um, she, uh, did that video quite a long time ago actually. And there was an article in, I think it was a spinoff in the magazine about that combo spin, um, um, technique that she does. Um, so that's a great resource for people if they are looking for a way to combo spin these all of these braids together. And I did a couple, I didn't like my results. I ended up weaving with the yarn and really liked the results, but I didn't like the yarn itself. For me, I would do a three ply lighter weight and make sure that in all places there was at least one ply of a braid with gold. So that's one thing that I wanted to comment on was all of these, so braid B, C, F and E, they all have that gold color in them. And A has a little bit of that brownie gold, but it's not like gold. And D has no, no gold. Um, the thing with D is it has that green that is present in braid C. Um, of all of these, I would personally think about taking out A and D and not including those. And I would, I would personally spin B, E, and F together. That would be my combo spin. I would put those three together and I would do a singles of each. I would spin them each end to end and I would ply those three together. Um, and then I would think about doing C and D together. I'm not sure that I would include A because of all of that white and that dark brown. That braid is absolutely beautiful and I would, I, I personally, I'm not sure that I would include it. Um, that's what I would do, um, just like off the top of my head. I would probably card the bats, the braids into bats. So Nicole, that was my second choice was taking all of those braids and carding them all together for an overall gray, gray brown yarn, but you would lose all that beautiful color. So you'd have to weigh that. Um, that's enough for a sweater. I'd split out the colors and arrange them. Uh, that's a great idea, actually, Kathy. Um, for me, three ply, I would do a three ply lighter weight and make sure. Yeah. Okay. So that was the gold one. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm just rereading. Um, I'm, you guys are so fast. I would spin a sport three ply with mixed up color, mixed up combo spins. So Maggie would uh, mix it all up in a three ply. The other thing that I would think about doing is um, if I took B, E, and F and spun that as a combo, sp spot, combo spin. So I would pre-draft those ones out to like the, like to like within an inch of their life. I would just pre-draft and pre-draft and pre-draft. And those three I would spin to a bobbin. So A would be a bobbin, E would be a bobbin, F would be a bobbin. And then I would ply those three together for a three ply sport weight. And then I would do the same thing with A, E and A, C and D. I would pre-draft them to within an inch of their life. But then I would spin them each on their own. So A would become a three ply sport weight, C would become a three ply sport weight, and D would become a three ply sport weight. And then I would do a shifty sweater. So A, E, and F, that combo yarn would become the background, and A, C, and D would become the colors of the shifty that would move through. That's what I would do now that I've thought about it. Um, Three ply DK large shawl probably blend braid E. Yep, that's what Kathleen Kathy says. Um, let's see. Oh, Rebecca, you've got tons of ideas. She's she's given a couple. Um, <laughs> Diane says honestly, I would just look at it for about a year. Absolutely. Um, 
I would not mix A with the rest. Elizabeth agrees with me. Uh, maybe you should sample a few ideas. Oh, Megan, you just, oh, I love it. Um, if all blended would give a brightness to the other colors. So if you left A in there, it would give a brightness to the other colors. It would. Um, it would. A and D would work really well together because of that purple and that green um, and, and that bluey purple, that they, they would work really well together. So if you were absolutely set on those two, um, I would probably put those two together. Um, oh yes, we're still here, Florence. <laughs> we're like, we're, yeah, we're chatting away. So those are all awesome questions, you guys. Um, or sorry, um, awesome answers. So the very, very first person that answered, I think it was Holly. Um, so Holly, I'll be sending you some stitch markers if you can send me your mailing address. So those will be for you, Holly. All right, let's go on. Uh, we have, this is from Sarah. This is Breeding Color Study. So Sarah shared this on Slack, and I think she put it in the Ravelry group as well. She finally finished with her Breeding Color Study. So this was our sharp relay that we're just finishing up. She knit the Class Star hat by Wooly Warmhead. I love Wooly Warmhead. Her patterns are fantastic. And this worked beautifully. Um, I was going for a foliage and flowers vibe because of the picture that Katrina used as inspiration. It turned out to be super cheerful, I think, and I spun the background yarn with a more marling than the with more marling than the contrast yarn. So the background yarn was half of each color spun to one bobbin. So the dark green, the light green, and the yellow, and then the other half split four times. So it's basically a fractal. Then for the contrast yarn, she did the same she did half of each color to one bobbin again but then she only split the other half twice um and spun uh to spin the second bobbin she enjoyed the spinning and trying out a short backward continuous strap. the knitting was a bit unpleasant because of the coarseness of the yarn and the tight stitches in the clusters but wearing the finished toque isn't unpleasant at all i enjoyed working with those colors because they aren't ones that i normally choose and I quite like how some of the combos ended up. My favorite is the marled dark red knit with the marled dark green. I figured out a sneaky way to hide my ends as I knit so the toque is fully reversible and the reversible photo is the one on the far uh on on our far right so it's the one that's that's off to, on the end. Gorgeous Sarah absolutely beautiful and she had to leave early today which is why we did um the breed and color study reveal at the beginning of the show. So if you missed that and you're just joining the live stream now, you have to go back and check that out. But um, yeah, she did just a gorgeous, gorgeous hat. Wooly Warmhead, if you're ever looking for some fun stuff, definitely something to check out because uh, her patterns are fantastic. So Loreline shared this on the Slack channel. She did a uh, the Headband with a Twist by Morella Moments. So this is handspun mill ends pin drafted from Kingdom Fleece and Fiberworks. Aren't those beautiful? She spun them short forward draw on her little gem on a ratio of 10 to 1 and it's a two ply. I love that on Loreline. And actually I think that Loreline, um, I don't think she's here today. Um, yeah. She is missing. So thank you for sharing that, Loreline. All right, another one from Sarah because I completely missed it in the Slack channel. It was totally my fault. Um, she nailed her comfort cardi. And the Pantone colors for 2021 are yellow and gray, which are my favorite colors. So I just thought that was awesome. So her Zero to Hero project is done. She did the Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Mowry. Uh, she didn't go from the raw fleece, but this is her first sweater spin and she enjoyed doing it so much that she's already 75% done with her second sweater spin. The yellow fiber was the Pegasus colorway from Paradox sorry, from Paradise Fibers. It's an 80-20 merino silk blend and the gray was Ashland Bay gray merino. Yarn A was 100% yellow and yarn B was 66% yellow, 34% gray. And then yarn C was the opposite, 34% yellow, 66% gray. And then yarn D was 100% gray. So that's how she did the, um, 
the 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 fate um she had uh, a 60 basically a 65 35 split for the gray and yellow and then the yellow and gray and she was able to do that fade all the way down and didn't have to worry about about fading the colors from the 100 percent yarns because they were already faded for her so it turned out perfectly love her fade says dana um I'm just catching. I just love saying woolly warm head. I know, right? It's so much fun. Although it's a tongue twister when you've been talking for an hour. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's hard to say it. Um, she has a lot of yarn left over using about 100 yards less per color than was called for despite adding length to both the body and the sleeves. Um, and then she goes into how she made each of the yarns. So definitely check out the show notes because it's all there. Um, and you can uh, um, do what she did and copy what she did because she shared all of her stuff and all of her um, notes on her project page on Ravelry. And uh, it's in the show notes as well. We have a couple of people who have finished their Zero to Hero. So that was the first Zero to Hero. And then Ruth, I love this shawl so much. Knit Witch on Ravelry. She, there are so many lovely items to view and inspire me. And I look forward to doing this again. However, this year, 2020, this is my favorite knit and spin project. She purchased a blend of alpaca wool from Mountain Meadow Wool, which became the base color. And she sorted and spun a lovely nuts and berry Shetland silk blend from Ingle Nook Fibers for the color changing secondary yarn. Isn't this braid shockingly beautiful? <laughs> I love this braid so much. Um, the result makes me happy and I wear it quite a lot. Ruth, it looks amazing on you. Well done. This next one is from Kaylee. This is her zero to hero. She finally finished a shawl that she started from a fleece in August of 2019. A lot of blood, sweat and tears went into this as I didn't particularly enjoy spinning or plying the yarn. And I frogged the first pattern I cast on because the lace was very challenging with such a dark color. All that said, I absolutely love the finished product and used up most of the yarn. This is my first fleece to finished object project and know there will be many more in my future. The pattern is Flagstaff by D. O'Keefe. Amazing. Um, Kelly says, I always use less hand spun than the pattern calls for, probably because I underestimate when I overest underestimate when calculating. I don't know what it is, um, Kelly, because we obviously we've talked about this in the in the podcast before. I don't know if it's that our grist is super different or it really shouldn't affect yardage per se. Like if you if a sweater calls for 1200 yards of yarn, like just because it's hand spun, it should be about the same. So I don't know what it is about yardage. Like I don't use nearly what's called for, for yardage in patterns. Like my jingle behind me is a really good example. Like that pattern calls for, um, for my size that I'm doing, it calls for 1200 yards of yarn. And I've only used, I'm on a sleeve now and I'm all, I've only used about just shy of 800. Um, and I'm certainly not going to use another 400 for sleeves. So it's really interesting how that, how that happens. Um, final community participation. This is Megan's default yarn. So this is the last of our 51 yarns group. A, this is our last one. Group B is continuing on for a whole nother year. Um, they've got the latter, the second half of their study, but group A is officially done. And uh, the first episode of Wool and Spinning Radio in January will actually be with Megan and Rebecca who finished up their 51 Yarns spins, their, the whole book, and we chat about what that is like. So um, this is her uh, default yarn. Um, her fiber is ideally a medium staple length, medium crimp like Shetland is her default fiber, which is awesome because that's our next breed and color study. For a wheel, she likes any, although she has learned that she prefers a Saxony style. And the structure of her default yarns is a two-ply, low-twist singles, low-ply low twist woolen, supported long draw fingering weight. Um, when I thought about my default yarn, I learned that my default yarn was very planned out. I was a knitter for over 20 years before I started spinning, and I always gravitated to colorwork knitting as my favorite. When I started spinning and was learning about yarn structure, I heard about three plies that they were round and good for cables and texture, and two plies were good for color work because they tended to flatten next to each other when knit together. I started gathering up some of my favorite color work yarns, Jameson Spindrift, Knit Picks Palette, Jameson and Smith, 
and dissected them apart to see how they were constructed. What I found was that they were all two ply and they all had very, very low ply twist and also very low twist in the singles. When I knit with them, I paid attention and found that yes, indeed, the low twist two ply tended to make them lie flat into each other when knit into color work. You know when you're knitting color work and the, and the yarns kind of like nestle together and they almost like nestle into each other? That's what Megan's talking about here. So she put these dissected samples of yarn onto a control card and used that as my control card to spin my Fair Isle yarns. I used Spinzilla one year to spin up five different colors of Shetland and knit a traditional Shetland Fair Isle vest with this control and thus my default yarn was born. It's fantastic. Thank you for sharing all of your 51 yarns, you guys. That's just amazing. Um, it's just incredible. Yeah, 50, uh, Megan says 51 and done. The problem is, is that 51 yarns, then from every yarn that you spin, you want to spin another 51 from that yarn because you learn more and then you go to the next one and the next one and the next one. Oh, Rebecca, you're going to have to share. Just photographed my last 51 yarn swatches today. Oh, you're going to have to share those. I can't wait to see them. Um, about the yarn and the yardage, Diane is wondering if maybe it's because it uh, plumps up in the, it bulks up in the bath. Um, and Kelly said, I definitely find that when I'm using commercial that she uses much, much closer to the estimated. It'll be interesting to see what my mill sponge Chevy it gives me for the OA when I knit it. Oh, that is true, Kelly. You're going to have to uh, report back. Please do. Most patterns, especially for magazines, overestimate so people don't run out of yarn. Yes, that is true. Uh, thank you, Megan. Oh, great. Uh, Mars says, I'd like to invite you all to try the Wooly Warmhead Wooly Dozen Cal next year. So she's moderating the Cal. There's so many great hand spun hat options. That is so true. Yeah. So if you guys like spinning, if you guys like spinning and knitting hats, definitely check that out. Um, all right. Last giveaway of the year. Um, well, I've got a whole bunch of stitch markers to give away. I've got four, four left. One, two, three, four. Um, can you guys tell me what is, um, what, what's your goal for next year? And then we'll say goodbye because it's getting late and I have to start queries and explorations. So what is your goal for next year? What is something that you were hoping to accomplish? Do you want to spin some of the luxury yarns for a luxury along? Do you want to spin it in a sweater and participate in Zero to Hero? Um, do you want to do a natural shade sweater? What do you guys want to do? So Eve says she wants to spin. So much eye candy today. Yes, Mars, it's so true. Debbie wants to knit a sweater. <laughs> to get a spinning advent calendar and spin it. I love it. Um, and Shauna wants to spin and knit her first hand spun sweater. Knit another hand spun sweater. Get, I want my mojo back. <laughs> a blanket from my Wensley Dale. Goals for next year are to knit two sweaters from Stash. Spin three sweater quantities from Old Stash. Make three quilts for my girls and weave some hand spun. That's amazing. Um, so Eve, or Eve, I already have your mailing address. Debbie, Karma, and Shauna, if you guys could send me your mailing addresses, I would really appreciate it. Spin for socks. Spin from Stash without replenishing too much. That's my goal too, San. Uh, knit up some of the hand spun sweater quantities that I spun over the past few years. That's a great goal, Elizabeth. Definitely hop into Zero to Hero to do that. Dana wants to do all the things. Awesome. Want to get better at spinning on support spindles. Weave with some hand spun. Process my Jacob fleece and knit the Woodlark shawl with it. Great, Cheryl. Spin for woven blankets. Oh, Bridget, girl of my own heart. I'm hoping next year I can do my farm, my farm visits again for fleeces. I miss driving around the province this year. Totally, Kelly. I wish I could come with you and do that with you. <laughs> I intend to make my own advent calendar for next year. Pack it now and forget all about it. That's a great idea, Linnea. We should all do that. I love that. Advent calendar um, packing. Okay, so Sarah, Sarah Rothwell, Diane, Dana, Holly, Eve, Debbie, Karma, and Shauna, if you guys could send me your mailing addresses, either on Slack or through Patreon or on Ravelry, um, I will pop those stitch markers into the mail for you guys. Thank you so much for being here today. You guys are just such a pleasure. You have made 2020 go by 
in a whirlwind of lots and lots of difficult moments and difficult times, you guys have been there for each other. You've been there for me. And I just want to thank you so much for, um, your kindness, your gentleness, um, for listening to one another, for being tolerant toward one another. Um, and when, when there are different views and different viewpoints, you're coming from different areas of the world with different ideals and different thoughts and beliefs. And you guys are nothing but kind and tolerant toward one another. And I want to thank you for that. You have made 2020 a lot brighter for me. Um, as we've kind of gone through this year. And I just want to thank you so much for that. I, I'm so grateful and, and I have so much gratitude for everyone in this community. Thank you so much. And thank you to one another for your um, support and kindness towards one another. Have an amazing holiday season, whatever it is that you celebrate, wherever you are. I personally celebrate Christmas. And so I would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a happy, happy, happy new year. If you have gotten the vaccine or you are getting the vaccine or you are planning to get the vaccine or you have access to the vaccine, please share with others um, your experience to hopefully lessen some of the fear and lessen some of the misinformation that's out there. And also to just share your experience so that we can all sort of support, continue to support one another, no matter what your decision is one way or the other. Stay safe, stay happy, stay kind. I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful couple of weeks and I will chat with the Wool Circle on fr on Thursday at, um, I said 9.30, but we're going to have to do it at 9 a.m. because we have a thing with Mike's family afterward, which is totally fine. And um, I just want to say thank you and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Bye, you guys. Mm -hmm.